It's a war of words, literally a war of words that the French-Canadian province of Quebec has been waging against the rest of Canada so it can become a French enclave in an Anglo-North America. The weapon of choice is a law called the Charter of the French Language, a thicket of linguistic rules and regulations that require French in the workplace, on public signs, French virtually everywhere. It's led to a mass exodus of English speakers, mostly from Montreal, once the crown jewel of the English minority. Despite the laws, English continues to sneak out of the closet. It's provoked a government crackdown. The language police have been placed on full alert. It makes for some distinctly Canadian moments. The not very mean streets of Montreal, walking his beat, looking not for parking violations, or for pets fouling the footpath, is Fernand Bernier. What he looks for and photographs are signs that offend his French sensibilities. English signs. He is one of 15 language cops on the force. It was Bernier who cracked the case of the belligerent bead lady. I had a gentleman come in here with his camera and a piece of paper saying there has been a complaint against you and I'm here to take photographs. Language police. The lady herself, Ruth Shine. Enchanté, hello. Owner of the Bead Emporium, a Montreal craft shop busted by Monsieur Bernier after a snitch turned her in. And what did he find? All kinds of nice little handwritten signs explaining classes. Some were in English, a few were in French. And there were others, including ones that read, Please do not lean on the counter. And even more outrageous, Please don't unplug the air conditioner. They were cited for violations of the charter by our intrepid Fernand Bernier. Uh, the sign is only in English. Inspector Clouseau, <coughs> terminator of English terms. English must be like that and French like that. In French, twice bigger than English. His patrol is all about ensuring that what English does appear is half the size of the French. And if there is no French at all, voila, a dossier. This is a outdoor. We play all kinds of shows, just in English. The penalties? Up to $7,000 in fines if the perpetrators do not mend their ways. Bonjour. Fernand's boss of bosses is Louise Baudouin, Minister of Culture and Communications. There has to be a common language in the country, and uh, so it's, it's French or English. Well, I think uh, that when you're 82% of the population, you, the majority wants it to be French language police doesn't it reduce this to a kind of comic opera it's not a police you know perfectly well civil servants civil servants a bunch of civil servants these laws which seem to be or many believe to be a, a determination to diminish another language no. if you look to at exclude another no, language no it doesn't prohibit uh, other languages. We want to see French also. The problem is unilingual English. Uh, you know, for example, on signs, what we say, and the Supreme Court of Canada said it was reasonable to say so, that French be predominant, but it doesn't prohibit English on signs. Well, not exactly true. Stop signs have been replaced by arrêt. English signs have been removed from hospitals, replaced by French or pictograms. And what really sticks in the craw of the English-speaking business community is a meddlesome bureaucracy forcing any enterprise employing more than 50 people to conduct all of its official business in French. It's a kind of genteel ethnic cleansing because about 250,000 English-speaking people have left in the last 15 years. Montreal novelist Mordecai Richler has ridiculed the laws and Madame Baudouin and what he calls her tongue troopers. Are they still in effect fighting a 250 year old war? To some extent, because you know on the license plates everywhere it's, it says je me souviens, I remember. And I think what you're supposed, no one's quite sure what they're supposed to remember, but I think it's the battle on the plains of Abraham. 
This sensitivity, this determination to maintain a French culture in North America was born of defeat. Here in 1759, on the Plains of Abraham, on the heights of Quebec City, the British under General Wolfe defeated the French army under General Montcalm. It established once and for all a British North America, or at the very least, an English-speaking North America. And that was that. Except, of course, it wasn't. One war ended, another had just begun. Okay, no bullets, no guns. But it's laws, it's restrictions, it's language, cops, it's harassment. English professor Keith Henderson What's he got? is fighting a rear guard He's action sure, right? against what he sees as a grand design. It's driving people out because North America is a mobile society. People say, I don't need this anymore. I mean, come on, I've got a life to lead, a business to run. What do I need to fight with language cops for? And they leave. The prize in this war of words is the city of Montreal second largest in Canada, one of the most sophisticated on the continent, a multi-ethnic metropolis, a simmering, spicy stew. The majority is French-speaking. But the city is home to the largest English-speaking population in Quebec. There you go. Thank you very much. And they are getting fed up, abandoning Montreal to Madame Baudouin and her dream of an English free society. She's become the arch villain of the English airwaves. We allow this, this goose stepper, Louise Baudouin, to turn around and make our lives an absolute misery, an absolute hell. Our people want to get the hell out of uh, Quebec. And in the newspapers, a sadistic disciplinarian, a scolding schoolmistress with a weekly list of new targets. For example, immigrants, and especially the children of immigrants. No matter where they come from, they must attend French schools. We have to be vigilant. For example, for newcomers to send, there's no choice. There won't be no choice. No free choice for newcomers because we want them to integrate to the French majority. It's an old romantic nationalist agenda where a people governs itself and passes laws to encourage in an ethnocentric way your own people and their development. But the problem with the 20th century is that peoples are mixed. It's an open world. We come, we go. And this is especially true in North America. Clement Arage is a perfect example. He came from noisy Lebanon and opened a peaceful little diner in Montreal and plastered his window with all his specials, all legally in French, except... They want me to take out the takeout. <laughs> takeout. Leaving in the takeout prompted a stern letter of reprimand and the opening of an official dossier. It sounds very serious. I know the case here. Gerard Paquette is a supervisor in the office de la langue française. I do not say that some of us are not a little bit overzealous in the implementation of that charter, but generally, we are very tactful about how to deal with that. We are very polite. Okay, sorry. Okay. Thank you. Merci. Among Monsieur Paquette's many responsibilities is the evaluation of his inspector's findings in the field. Uh, Cuban, Cuban cigar cigars on, the on sale here. here. Yeah. On this day, the offensive sign investigated by Monsieur Bernier is clearly aimed at Americans in search of an illegal substance. Mm -hmm. But it provokes a letter of reprimand, not for what it sells, but for how it says it. Cuban. Cigars. This is political correctness as you will not find it anywhere else. The Marx Brothers would have been at home here, in this bureaucracy for seeking out the most minuscule offender, like the lowly apostrophe, which is a no-no in French. So Eaton's became Eaton, and Young's ran for their paintbrush. And apostrophes aren't allowed. I mean, no. It was Schwartz's Montreal Hebrew delicatessen. And they had to take the apostrophe off. Yeah. Now it's Shea Schwartz, charcuterie Hebraic de Montreal. And though the menu is bilingual, Shea Schwartz has received yet another citation for failing to double the size. Not of its smoked meat special, but of the French lettering used to describe it. 
it's, it's such a childish argument that whichever side you're on, it's embarrassing if you're an adult. Then there was the case of the impertinent parrot. Hello. Someone went into a pet shop and I was amazed to find a unilingual English parrot and registered a complaint. I don't know whether the parrot was shot or not. <laughs> We've never intervened to impose on someone to have its parrot speaking in French. But let me ask you, was there a complaint about a parrot? No, sir. No. Hello. And then there was Matzagate. If I were crossing the border into the United States, I'd be very careful not to have any marijuana or cocaine or heroin on me. But coming in here, you better not have kosher matzahs. Last year, an overeager language inspector caused the seizure of all boxes of kosher matzah coming into Montreal around the time of the Jewish holiday of Passover because the boxes were not in French. The seizure provoked outrage and derision from just about all quarters. Finally, the government was sufficiently embarrassed to say that kosher matzahs, unilingual boxes, would be legal for 65 days of the year. On the 66th day, if you make yourself a matzah omelet, you're uh, committing an offense here. <laughs> it's an illegal substance. Such foolishness, of course, invokes the novelist's right to exaggerate and to do the unbearable in Canada, embarrass his countrymen in front of Americans. <laughs> And the Americans, big brother, have a lot to answer for. It only takes a stroll down one of Montreal's commercial streets to see the enormity of Madame Baudouin's task. What is an earnest francophone to do about McDonald's, their apostrophe, and their Big Macs, or Blockbuster? And clearly, Dunkin' Donuts would not agree to change to Les Beignets pour Tromper. So the big franchisers were given a pass. The fact is that out there in the world, there is this force called the English yes. language and English culture and yes. what the French call American cultural imperialism mm -hmm. that is sweeping the world, Yes, has swept the world. Yes. There is not a lot of choice left. Ah, you know, we believe in diversity. Diversity of identity. But and language is, is part of that identity and diversity. And I really believe in that. The whole continent is English. You know, we're different. We want to stay different in North America. Why not? As a country. Yeah. Yes. Not as part of Very Canada. Very enthusiastic about this. Not as part of Canada. No. You want out. Yes. But until that good day comes, that great bonjour in the sky, the work of Monsieur Bernier goes on. Street by street, store by store, word by word, bead by bead, bird by bird.